All the eyes of the world are on New York this weekend, as presidents, CEOs and activists from almost 200 countries gather at the UN headquarters to officially adopt the new framework of global development, the Sustainable Development Goals. Like its forerunner, the Millennium Development Goals, the SDG is a set of objectives to make the world a much better place by 2030. The 17 goals are highly ambitious and range from zero poverty and zero hunger to a substantial reduction of inequality and the preserving of the ecosystem. It's a solemn pledge made at the highest level of business and government. But can the world deliver on it? We sat down with Professor David Hume, the executive director of the Brooks World Poverty Institute at the University of Manchester, to talk about the grand plan to improve the world and our place in it. My institute works a lot at the uh, grassroots level in Bangladesh and back in 2002-2003 we couldn't see the MDGs were making much different to what was happening on the ground in Bangladesh. Now 15 years on it's possible in a way to look over that longer time period and on balance I'd argue that the Millennium Development Goals have actually contributed to improving uh, human well-being. Not not as much in a way as they promised to, but still they've made a, a useful contribution. For the Millennium Development Goals, that was in the run-up to the Millennium, and nobody actually knew what the game was that they were playing. People were having lots of conferences and setting goals and setting targets, but nobody had actually thought that they'd bring these together into a, a set of Global Development Goals until quite late on. This time round, then, the Sustainable Development Goals are a formal UN process. So all 193 members of the UN have been invited to a series of meetings. I've had to argue very energetically and compromise to very high degrees to come up with the, uh, with the 17 goals that we've got. So this has been quite a different a process, much more inclusive, whereas the Millennium Development Goals were mainly led by the rich nations and pushed by foreign aid agencies um, in the Sustainable Development Goals that we're going to get uh, today, then all 193 UN members have engaged with those. In a recent blog post you wrote that the Sustainable Development Goals are either the biggest promise for mankind or the biggest lie of the world. Now the promises speak for themselves but what could make them a lie? Well the Sustainable Development Goals would be a lie if the world leaders, and there's going to be more than 150 in New York today agreeing them, if those people agree to those goals and then they don't actually pursue them. And that certainly was one of the problems that happened after the Millennium Development Goals in uh, 2000. That quite a number of the leaders that actually declared that they would pursue the goals, having made that declaration, did not actually move forward and seek uh, energetically to reduce poverty. Do you think that we should restrict the scope of the Sustainable Development Goals to the developing world or does it have lessons for us? Well, interestingly, the Sustainable Development Goals are different than earlier goals and they are universal. They are to apply to all countries, all of them. Now, one major reason for that is climate change. I mean, in rich countries, we've got to change the way in which we use energy and the way in which we have carbon emissions. But also in terms of the social and economic goals, those are meant to be universal and would apply to all countries. So certainly in the UK, for example, we'll be agreeing that nobody should be left behind. And quite clearly, when you look in the UK, people are left behind. They are homeless on our streets. They're in our sink estates outside of Manchester with very few opportunities for decent employment, for being able to get education, get skills, uh, take part in social life. And so these goals will apply to the UK and will apply to Manchester. One of the things that I'd hope uh, that colleagues in Manchester uh, will be able to, to work on, academics but also councils and the NGOs, uh, would be on a is anybody left behind in Manchester report and that in a year's time after the Sustainable Development Goals are agreed then we'll be asking in Manchester why people are left behind as well as asking why people are left behind in Bangladesh or in Botswana.